okay, please give me five minutes to talk to you about geography because we need to understand the scale of what's going on. This is the state of North Carolina. This is the area that's without power still. This is also the state of North Carolina. This yellow outline is the country of Belgium that I've overlaid for scale, okay? This is the scale. 230,000 customers without power means households. Based on US census data, the average household size here is about three, which means we're talking about six to 700,000 people who have not had power for a week. That is an emergency by itself. If you don't have power for a week, then if you had food stored in the freezer, no, you don't. If you had breast milk, insulin stored in the fridge, no, you don't. You don't get to run your CPAP machine. Three quarters of a million people without power for a week should make headline news by itself. But power outages are unfortunately one of the mildest of problems. Water is also out cell coverage is out. If you're seeing people posting from this area, there's a good likelihood they're having to drive miles to do that. And that is if they have a car that wasn't destroyed, if they can get gas somehow, and if they have roads they can drive miles on. These are the road closures. Okay. And these roads are not closed because there's some water on them. They're closed because they look like this now. Right? This times this. That's the scale. The reason the roads look like that is because this is the topography. This is not like a lot of cities where you drive for a half an hour to go get to this. This is the region. This is where people live. When you live in the mountains, you get one road and they're gonna put it wherever they can put it. That's why it's shaped like this. Very often that's gonna be along a river or next to it. When a road looks like this, right? That means the land looks like this. So when a hurricane decides to go hiking in the mountains, which has never happened in this area before, ever, you're going to get a torrential amount of water and it's gonna be moving very fast because it's moving down a mountain. And this river is going to explode. It's gonna take out this road right here and it's gonna take out this road right here. And then everybody that lives in here is trapped because you're not walking out. Some people are. Some people are putting what they can and their children on their back and hiking out, which is, to be honest, pretty representative of typical Appalachian scrappiness. Anyway, the other thing that's going to happen is mud, because the water is not going to just gently fall down the mountain and go in the river. It is going to get into the earth, and the earth is going to become mud, and that is incredibly heavy. And the whole mountainside is going to shear off like a windshield wiper and carry everything with it and put it in the river. And that's why we're seeing the level of destruction we're seeing, because roads are not the only thing that is gone. This is not a river. This is a town. This is Chimney Rock. This is a screenshot from this user. This is what it looked like before. And this is the scale that we're talking about. There are hundreds of small towns in this picture. This is Asheville, this right here. You've heard a lot about Asheville, probably, hopefully. Asheville is not a small remote mountain town. It is a city of 100,000 people. It is the city that you would drive to to go to the doctor if you live in an actual small remote mountain town. And it did get devastated. It did get hit very hard. But part of the reason why you are seeing so much coverage out of Asheville is that you can get there right now. If you're going to send a news crew to North Carolina, they can just drive into Asheville. And you do not want to be taking up a helicopter right now just to take pictures because people are still trapped. I do think some news organizations went here for a working lunch and didn't ask anybody if anyone lives up here. So I'm a little frustrated by that. But gradually, I think the coverage is developing. Um, the rest of this is going to be very bleak, so don't watch it if you're already not okay, please. The mortality counts that you've seen in the tens are irresponsibly optimistic. Those are the people who've been identified. When you find someone's remains washed down a river, how do you know where they came from? How do you contact their loved ones to get an identification? When the cell towers are down, when the roads are down, when all of those people are still concentrating on trying to get out and trying to get food and water, you're going to wait. You're going to wait until the living are taken care of. We have not begun to hear the mortality numbers from this disaster. This is a small country. And it's my mom's small country. And it's gone. Please pay attention.